Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And so it begins. Welcome to The Butt Show, live from Quarantine Studios, in the flesh, baby. It's like that. And then it's like this. D-Vibes. Wait, 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 see? D-Vibes. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, it was like this, and then it was like that. But this is thing. It's a like two bit. You got the first, and it's like uh, this, and it's like that, and it's like this. And, uh, and, and uh, it's like that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, keep those applause going. We've got Borum Lee from Break Science. What's up, everybody? Yeah, welcome, Borum. Man, it is Honor so to good to have Thanks you here. Thanks for having me, bud. Bro. What's up, D Vibes? Yeah. Vibes. What's up, bro? Yeah, you know, this is a thing. You know, this is like home. This is like uh, the old home is the new home, just like it was. Here we are again. It's like we used to do this thing, you know, had Borum on the show a couple times. It's just me and D Vibes were hanging out. And, uh, you know, the best guests we usually find out are, uh, you know, keyboard players. And uh, those are our favorite guests. So it's like a council of keys. I think I said in the last show, this is a, yeah, this is like a safe place for key, for keyboard players. I made that promise <laughs> going forward that the Butts show is hereby always declared to be a safe place for keyboard players. It's not always easy to be the keyboard player, and no one would know that better than keyboard players. So as a as a bond, exactly, you know, like, exactly they have they have guitar world, and we now have our keyboard world thanks to Butts. Hey, you know what? I'm happy to do it. I'm glad like, we can all relate on that level, guys. It's a great place to yes. start. Borum, how the hell are you? You know, um, I'm seeing life in a different way because of uh, yeah everything that is going on. And um, I'm wel- welcoming the perspective shift. It's amazing how everything has changed in a period of like 10 to 12 to 14 days. It's like... Everyone thought that there was a scare, but it was like, it was around the world and sort of closing in on us. And then all of a sudden, it's like, the, what can change? I mean, uh, and not all of us are as affected uh, to the some degree as other people. So it, it hasn't gotten as real for some as it's gotten for uh, others. But, uh, you know, I, I can tell, at least for me, I can feel it. And I'm sure most of us can as well. That like the the world we knew has changed, and we're not going to see that world the way we knew it again. And and so as the world turns, like something is turned inside of me, and like I am not the same person that I was twelve days ago. I I would have to agree. It's a, I mean everything everything's definitely done changed, and uh, yeah, I mean you know as just trying to balance out the impending stress and all the stress that's happening at this moment and that's on the way financial burden losses of of of, of life and tragedy i'm tr- you know just trying to balance that out with the impending perspective of how things can change for the positive too and um yeah you know i'm looking Absolutely. forward to that you know well you know i mean I, th- that was like my first reaction this is almost this, this whole show is almost born out of like uh like a like an adverse reaction to being forced away from moving forward in my life. You know, I had things going on uh, that were taken off the table, 
and I didn't want to sit around and be upset about it. I didn't know if anyone would tune in or, uh, you know, listen, but for the hell of it, I mean, I just had to stay busy and do something that would, uh, you know, could maybe make things easier for someone else, but also in turn, uh, maybe make it easier for me and anyone that we do it for. So if it's one person, two people that feel better from the show, that would never be a waste of time. So it, it started out as that, and it's just, uh, I don't know, like, uh, I had no idea that things were going to get so intense. I mean, like, we all saw, like, we all knew and we heard and the math would suggest that the world was going to change and we were going to feel its effects at some point. Uh, but we, I had, you, you could never know what that's going to feel like. And it's still closing in. And I have to interject, like, as I was trying to get a show going for today, uh, the idea that, like, I could, uh, how to approach what's happening in the news, because if anyone's really... Uh, paying attention uh today uh, in the news it has finally been reported that the u.s has now moved into first place in the number of people that have been affected by the coronavirus that have been infected i didn't see that yep that has just been determined sure. and it's like it's not a, and it's because and, and if you want to understand why and it's very frightening because we're now starting to see just how bad our response is and uh you know who knows what the what because if we're basing our like our worst case scenario fears on what happened in other countries then we have to now in turn look at uh what the numbers are suggesting is like currently happening and is about to happen here i mean like i haven't left basically this quarantine building and like i, I i'm not really feeling like doing it it's like until the until I mean, same, we, yeah. same with everybody i mean yeah. we're, we're all cooped up yeah it's just uh it's a hard day to really feel the that we we should be uh, taking people's mind off that, I think it's really time for at least the, especially the people that are in America right now, to if you haven't been taking this seriously, like look, understand that now. Uh, I mean, I'll pull up the numbers. Like I, I really shouldn't have to stick them in your face right now, but the amount of people that have died from this disease in America is like soaring into first place. Uh, the amount of people who are infected soaring into first place. The experts are telling you that by next week. We will not be able to handle uh, the sick at the hospitals. We are already put to the test right now, and uh, it's it's kind of uh, it's it's frightening. What what can I tell you? Uh, especially when you know that we don't have the right people in place at the top to be dealing with this. It's out of control. Yeah, They're saying yeah, that yeah. don't listen to what the president has to say. Even it's like it's like the guy whose voice is supposed to be the most important. Like yes. we're supposed to not listen to him right now. The, the you know the top doctor that's in charge of me is like Fauci's like don't listen to him Bernie Sanders like we can't listen to him just don't listen to what he has to say yeah I was listening to Chris Cuomo uh, just before and that was his whole point it's like the president is telling you things that are not true you should not be listening to him you have to learn now that you have to tune out the president and uh, basically listen to his brother uh, you know Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> who is now uh, America's favorite person because he is the one who is letting people know that no matter what you think we're doing, we're not doing enough of it. So we got to keep, yeah. uh, we just got to keep pushing on. And what are we going to do in the meantime, guys? It's like, I know that uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the two of you are both people uh, and lots of the people I talk to are finding solace in the making of music, the thing that made them who they are in the first place. And uh, I imagine you've got yourself a setup over there and you're uh, working on some things, Borum. Oh, yeah. I mean, that side of my life hasn't changed, you know. Um, but definitely feeling the collective energy of just the collective psyche of, of my immediately, immediate surroundings to my city, to, my, to the country, to the world. Like, we all feel that shit right now. So yeah. the creative process has been affected, you know channeling that feeling that like weight right now is it's a challenge you know absolutely it's a major challenge it's not like you know when i was creating on a sunny day and like oh it's gonna be a great day to write a song like it's not really like that right now but i mean it's still going on no, nobody canceled creativity but right it's just a whole different way we're in a different mindset than when we when we have been ever before in terms of when we make it and creating when you're stressed and when you have a lot on your mind, isn't it's not always um, it's not so easy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. mean, and there's like, and and, and honestly, uh, 
the songwriting uh, trends within the music community, uh, you know, no one has really been, have, everyone's been staying away from like matters of real pain and hurt. Uh, you know, like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what, hard to say, but maybe at least in like, uh, you know, I honestly think people need to use this opportunity to like put more of their their true feelings about what's happening into their music. It's like, use your art to, to process your feelings. Uh, if you need comfort, write yourself a song that comforts you and maybe perhaps it'll comfort somebody else. Yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely say it's taking me a while to gather my thoughts, you know, especially yes. to the point of where I'd like to share them and, do, you know, like express something impactful and not just like fill the airwaves with meaningless fodder or to be like, I'm here, send me money, I'm giving lessons or, you know, like all this shit. Like, okay, I understand, like, you're hustling, you got to feed your kid, of course, yeah. I'm with that. But like for me, like I, I'm just, just wait, you know, kind of, just waiting, you know, just like gathering my thoughts and like I definitely want to share and like help and and alleviate and do all those things. But like I, I just need, I need a little a minute, you know. I need like maybe a few weeks. I don't know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like I, I definitely have a strong desire. I want to share. I want to like put stuff out there and like. I don't want to charge people for it. like I just want to like, put music out there and things that will heal. Of course, like my whole you know, way of living has been upended just like everybody else. So yeah, like I have to figure out how to make a li continue to make a living and, and get, you know, make money. You know what I mean? Also, but like, you know, it's a tricky thing with, with your art, you know, and, and your mode, you know, mode of expression, because I, I, I don't make it to, I don't do it to make money. I, I've always done it because I love, to make to do it to make music right. and i love to make people happy doing it you i'll know? do it i'll do it either way i'm the same way it's like i'll make money it's nice yeah. to try to make money but i'm just gonna do it either way uh and, and, and this and this thing is like obviously this thing has put a whole new thing on all of us in terms of the making money part like okay well every way that we were making money before has been canceled so like figure out a new way to eat and pay your rent right now yeah, you and that's I mean? the thing is like you don't know it, how long this shit's gonna last. Right, it might only be a temporary thing to sort of like uh, you know create I'm, like yeah, a I'm two not, month. I'm not counting on that. Uh, 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 well, no, what I'm saying is like if we create like if we look to create like a two to three month uh, platform that can sustain us uh, until the until like live events come back, that's the first step. But understanding that no matter where we're at after a couple uh, months, you know, uh, the reality is, is that we're going to have to start thinking in these terms anyway. Uh, you know, you know what I mean? Like beyond, uh, you know, when it's safe to go out, there's still going to be a, a further need for uh, online programming and the way and these vehicles of getting uh, p uh, information and music to the people. Uh, so I, I honestly think that the, the 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 needle was sort of swinging that way anyway. Uh, the, you know the, the popularity of uh, you know like Facebook Watch makes what I'm doing now more uh, more uh, of a thing than it could have been a couple years ago. But uh, you know something like this has really pushed uh, you know has really taken it further and, and really shown the necessity of uh, and the value of having uh, these virtual means of delivering. Uh, you know, shows to people and having people get used to the idea that, you know, this can be uh, okay and you can enjoy this sort of thing uh, going forward, you know? It's, we have to think about it. We have to, uh, we, if we weren't going to invent it this month, that wasn't the plan. We need to change the plan and we need to invent it this month. What's good, what we're doing now. With it. All aboard. Yeah. Well, we're doing it now, bro. All aboard. Full steam ahead. That's what we're doing. We're just, uh, we're hanging out. Uh, with each other and hoping that uh, you know people are joining us and I can see in the uh, you know in the comments we got some people here shout out to the listening audience thank you for tuning in tonight D vibes what you doing right now working on a track today oh yeah oh man you know tracking every day man been cooking up some heat man but... play something in yeah, the background can you can you like throw something on for me I don't have any sound bits right now yeah yeah Let's see what we got in the D-Vibes because Yo, because Borum, you don't spend enough time making tracks with D-Vibes. Do I have that right? You're both in Denver. Oh, we definitely need to be spending more time doing that. Word up. More time, yeah. We, we, do, we, we do pick up some stuff on, like, on New Year's. It's like, I've yeah, seen... we need to we need to get back get back in the lab as soon as we're allowed to like 
hang out with other people. We got to get get ready to do it. Well, what about this? You know, here's uh, yeah. another thing. We're reinventing this uh, this this whole this whole concept right now. Is just, you know, I see more and more people like uh, you know doing a track, sending the track over to their to their friend while they're over there. They add the track from their home system. He sends the track back. It's like there's more collaborations going on potentially now than there were before because, and that's the other thing that makes this period of time interesting is that everyone's got time. There's time to do this type of shit that there never was before, and that's all we can do. Sure. Yeah, you know the the form, you know the the skill of communication will be is definitely going to be sharpened on it on everybody. You know, just talking through social media, talking on the phone, you know, it's like all that stuff. It's going to be like, it's kind of our only way to communicate now. So we got to like really, you know, really be able to express ourselves with it. You know, and there's definitely like, because of all this, like everything going on, I've had like, for me personally, like I want to hermit myself more and like actually like remove myself and like not like, I'm, I don't have, I'm like, don't really want to participate in social media and stuff like that as much. And it's like, but I know how important it is too. So it's just sort of, it's just sort of balance, you know? And like, I don't know, it's more important now, definitely. And like how, how, how everyone like can talk to you, communicate, knows who you are. Like they can't see you perform or, or talk to you on the street or anything. Like it's solely like virtual now. So it's just like how you represent yourself. And I never, you know, was totally comfortable with the way I represented myself or just like just representing yourself on online and like, through the words that you say in your post or everything, you know, and like you know, the fear of just, you know, just like of, of not seeing what you want to say, you know, and, and that, you know, it's just that platform is not always like the, the most comfortable for me, but like it's, I have to force myself to get better at it and just to, you know, to distill your thoughts and, and wait to say the right thing and at the right time, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, it's like, it's like anything else. Uh, you know, this is to me, like this talk radio stuff, uh, is like the jazz of words, you know, like I literally, like, I feel like, I feel like I'm Art Blakey sometimes. It's like, I'll sit down at the kit, I'll pick up, I'll pick up the sticks and then I'll just start like, you know, expressing, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, I'll just start playing the drums a little bit, and, you know, like a little flam here, a little, well, especially when you're bantering with, with other cats that you feel comfortable with, like we are. Yeah. Now. Exactly. It's what what might start out as a little drum fill, then like the bassist comes in, and then you know, I get some key players. Today it's like an all keys band. You know, by the way, Borum, I should clue you into this that whether you realize it or not, the only thing that is stopping you from being a member of Kitar Nation is having a guitar. I mean, I could just put like a strap around one, like a small key. I could even make a keyboard into a keytar easily. Well, you what I'm gotta... saying is, like, D Vibes and I have started a band and uh, a culture. We need you. And we're calling it Keytar Nation. Have, have, have you guys seen Modesky's Mellotron Ensemble? Yeah. What? Shit is so dope, bro. Wait, he's got a Mellotron where? Ensemble. He's got like he plays. Just, he's in a Mellotron with like four other guys, and like, everybody just plays Mellotrons. Like, but people play beats on it. Whoa! Right. On it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, so cool. Right. With, yo, that's so cool. That's I real. I think I seen that on NPR somewhere. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were they were on Tiny Desk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look at my producer, radio producer John Lammy. He's like digging it up right now. You know oh, yeah. I mean? Hey, hey, Lammy. I, I, what's up, man? I, I'm sorry we can't get him on the call too. Yeah, he's over there. You know, like it, it's good. Like the producer's supposed to sound distant. Like I can maybe hold my microphone in his general he's direction. Of, he, Ask him a question. We'll hear how that sounds. He's one of the most sought after, um, you know, people in the industry right now. You know, Anderson Park wants to w works with him. Every, I mean, every big star is trying to get John Lammy on tour. Like you, you guys don't oh, even. They, man, they, Lammy, pe people don't even know. Like Lammy. people don't even know. Like I, we, we made that joke last night with Bloom. Bloom was like, as a matter of fact, like I don't even know why he's there right now. Like <laughs> he's like, yeah, I mean, what is happening? What, a, what an honor to have one of the best engineers in the biz doing the show. Yeah, well, it's just amazing. That's the that's that's where we're at in uh, society when like you know this is the best gig available <laughs> in Boston. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, Dang, uh, I don't know. It's even, like <laughs> even Wally's is closed right now. Yo, that is like unbelievable to think about because <laughs> as long as I've been in the city for about thirty damn years, there is and and, and for like another like how thirty before that at least. How long has Wally's been open? 
You know, like man, dude, since a, like, like like even like what twenties, thirties, forties, yeah, yeah, like established nineteen forty six, maybe is that what I'm remembering from the shirt? You got the shirt vibes. You've seen that sh- that logo like maybe I, like a million times in your life. I wear the Wally shirt all, all, because it has Wally's <laughs> face. Does. Right, man. <laughs> He wears that Wally shirt. You, 1947. You know that's what I said. I said 46 when I really thought about it. It was 47. Nice. All right. Well, I'm gonna put some background music. You never even put anything on D vibes. I was like giving you like a setup there. Oh, I did. Did you? Look, I, I, you know, I okay. can't hear nothing. Did I hear anything? Did you hear anything, Lammy? He's Forgive me if I don't shake hands. Thank you. <laughs> it's fun, right? It's fun. You know what I mean? People don't understand. It's fun to push a button. Like you know, come on. The little things in life that we love. Oh, here we go. Ooh, I like that. See? This is my Herbie impression right here. What? That is very Herbie. It's a good impression. That's my Paul Jackson. Sure is. Is right. This is the kid. This is why I put so I you know I I I, I uh, you know have protected co-host Deshaun. Of, and, co-host of the Butt Show as, as well, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's basically like, uh, you know, like everyone would say, like, you know, he's your Paul Schaefer. He's your he's your John ba- uh, Batiste. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. But like, you know, honestly, yeah, like I had vibes long before that. So it was like, well, maybe not before Paul Schaefer. But yeah, he's like, well, maybe one day we'll move to a format where like D vibes can host behind a rig. That's kind of what I'm seeing. It's like I want D vibes like behind a rig on the show. And this is kind of what it would be like. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah. it, it sounds like he's behind a rig right now. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, like maybe, see, this is what we should, the possibilities are endless right now. And if we, maybe we can put all of you in a window someday and it'll just be like that. You know, we're still just piecing the tech. The, the tech that they give you for these computers, for this software, is not really up to the challenge. I'm I'm more ready than it is it would it would seem but we probably just need to spend some money here you know what I mean we probably to get like like what the you know like the real television programs like we might be headed yes. there we, it, it might be time we're going to I mean. TV we're taking this to TV think big Yo, D Vibes what, what key was that A minor yes yeah turn, turn that shit up. I, <laughs> Oh, I hear you. I like to see, just like hearing little fragments come in and out. Yeah, it's working. Right. On a vibe right now. It's working. Uh, I'm going to have to email you this. You're going to have to put that piano down, bro. All right, let's do it. Yes. And, you, you know, know never, the... um, you know, some of the greatest things that have ever happened have happened through vo- voice memos. Do not discredit, you know, it's Good like tip. you have an idea and then you're like, oh, let me set up all the mics and get the computer and all the shit. It's like you could lose the idea, hit the voice memo immediately, you know? Right. I've sent voice memos around and, like, EQ'd it and all this shit and made I've, I've, we made multiple songs. Multiple break sign songs have had voice memo parts in it that we just, like, flew it in. And you don't, you know... Dude, and then the only and and, yo, it's like you could do that, and it's like not everyone just has John Lammy next to you, because like Lammy is that guy. It's like you have an idea. Oh, like you have to set up a mic. Like you don't even that mic is already set up. Like while you're having the thought when he's the thing is like with the post production of of um, ability now, you can do you can take like the most crappiest sounding garbagey recording and still do something with it to a degree because of all the post production possibilities. So what I'm saying, I mean, obviously you want a good recording. But the, the paramount thing is to capture the vibe and the idea, you know what I mean? 
Yes. Not, not get too lost, you know, not get too lost in the set, you know, like getting everything right, setting up, getting all the mics, you know. Of course, that's cool too. But, right. But yeah, no, I mean, that's the thing is like uh, there's things that are possible with this rudimentary tech that uh, actually can get the job done right now. Like uh, we're getting a, a, a real full uh, experience out on pretty like, like, like you know, ev simple like everything tech. could be everything could be an aesthetic. You know what I mean? You can create an aesthetic out of all of like like, for instance, the lo fi movement. It's an aesthetic because like they had shitty things to work with or like they sampled off of VHS tapes or like whatever, like like crappy equipment. But then it became an aesthetic, you know, and it became this whole vibe of of this is the sound, you know, like we know it's really noisy and there's all this hiss and extra dust and noise, but you'll deal with it because the vibe is happening, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's sometimes when you go, you sound like those samples without. And it's too clean. It takes away from like this. Yeah, man. My my yeah. philosophy is that you know, it always has to you know because I make a lot of electronic music, and if you make everything in the box and it never touches the air or sees the light of day, it's just it's it's just so cold. It doesn't have it's like so like having any element in the track that's like that was recorded and felt the air and you put it in there, and you can feel it right away. And like what I've actually even done is like made a whole song in the computer. No ex external recorded stuff, all like softs and stuff. But I've like played it, like in like just recorded it, like maybe in a bathtub or something, and then mm. brought it back into the track and put it really low underneath and doubled everything. And it's just to like, get like when things hit the air, it's just different, you know. It makes it it makes it more relatable because we live in the air and we breathe the air, you know. So yeah. if you listen to music that's hit the air, you'll feel that shit more. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Like, uh, you know, it's interesting. And, and you know, accidents also create uh, certain, uh, you know, ma miracles and magics. And there's all kinds of things that have led to developments in, in recording techniques and technologies that just, like, happened because someone decided to do something crazy or, like, made a mistake. Like, one of my favorite uh, stories is, uh, what do you got? I can hear Vibes is, on, is back at it. That's good. Well, I know that tune, Vibes. That's crazy. Are you doing my sound beds? I already had a sound. You can't hear it. When you stop playing, I actually put something else on. But then I heard you put something on. But it's like the same thing that I would have put on. It's like now he's running my sound beds. Is it, is it true that you guys used to be roommates, right? Yeah, roommates. Yeah. And uh, it how just many, How many years you guys, were you guys roommates? Two years, maybe? Yes, Two years, bro. Two years, but like in those, no, it, was, it felt like it felt like twenty. We had the best time. Like I took him everywhere with me. Uh, you have to understand. Like I'm not even joking. Like we went everywhere together. And then like I would wake up early and do a radio show, and I would just be like, "Vibes, you you want to do radio?" And he's like, "Yeah, man, let's go." And he let's came. Go. He came every day. We got you know <laughs> super high on the way. Uh, stopped at the Dunkin' Donuts, and uh, yep. you know like got a uh, sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> made jokes with the same employees every day who saw us and thought we were nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and we did our damn thing, you know? You guys are like uh, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd over there. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah in a way, it's just like it's, it's an interesting dynamic, uh, you know, like... And at the time, like he was just out of school, and I, you know, I, I was getting, I was becoming like an old guy for the first time, and it was just like, you know, he, he made me feel a little young again. I got, I got some years back. It's like I think I was gonna say this to you before when it's like you're not hanging out enough with D vibes. It's like, it's like I, I've sort of sent D, I, it's like D vibes. I had my time with vibes, and now it's like I need him to spread the love that he spreads to like each of my friends individually. So like you know, he's had like these runs with like each one, like a, like with maybe like a hand full of other of the other homies have like rolled with vibes for a period like whether it was Kraz or Schmeens or Deitch you know everyone's getting their little run with vibes and I think you need to I think you need to spend some time with vibes a little bit and just see what happens there because he brings something out of you dude well I mean you know, it was a it was an angel brought brought to bless all of us and we're we are we are so lucky to have him in our in our presence and in this lifetime thank you Yo, guys. And, and I gotta I'm, say oh I'm yes. lucky to have you guys you know she <laughs> Well, look love, love, I, I, it's a keyboard love fest. It Safe is. place. What did I tell you? Safe, the safest place of them all is in the sense. All, right, all right. What's the safety word over here? Clavinet? Come on. Clavinet. 
Let's talk, let's talk about the clavinet. Is that your favorite keyboard, D-Vibes? Man, the clavinet is. Because, like, you know, like, I, I grew up playing, like, you know, organ, like Hammond. I wasn't I wasn't much of a piano player. It was like I, I moved straight to the Hammond, you know. I oh, it's, a whole, it's a totally different instrument. It's not, you know. It, it is, like, man. Yeah. It's like apples and bananas, from, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I went from drums to organ. And then, like, when I finally got to play, like, a real clavinet, I, it just, like, blew my mind. Like, whoa, what is that? You can do this, and then you can make it sound like a guitar player where you don't even need one on the stage. So I'll, I'll take that for 300 please. <laughs> I, I, I wish somebody uh, would make a, a, a lighter version of it. Is this just not possible? Can, can, so can someone make a more portable, like, a, just like a couple, you know, maybe one or two less octaves, and, like, I feel like that would be a hit. Wait a minute. What did you just, what did what did you want? A a, a, a small uh, uh... a lighter, smaller, real clavinet that's got the strings and the whole shit. It's just more manageable, and one person can carry it. I got, easily. I got it for you, bro. The clavitar. The clavitar, bro. That would be great. The wait, uh, 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 hold, wait, hold on one second, guys. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, talking about a, a safe place for keyboardists, I'd like to welcome to our uh, conversation uh, the one and only, ladies and gentlemen, Nigel Hall. Oh, yeah, Landing, yes. can I get some applause? Oh, snap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, this, is, this, is, this, is this the keyboard fucking rabbit hole right now? Oh, no, this is. This is. Yeah, okay. we, we just, we just yes, brother Nigel. We just, Yes, my dear brother Noomsi. My dear sweet brother Noomsi. What's happening, y'all? Oh, glad we... you safe and sound back in the U.S., brother. Yeah, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Man. I, worry, I appreciate that, man. Glad yeah, we we beat the buzzer, bro. We beat yeah. the buzzer, but it was all good. We're all here. We're all happy. True. We don't have coronavirus yet, and we're good. Yeah, so just, right, get it. just to bring you up to date in the conversation, uh, they were just uh, discussing the uh, specs for uh, portable clavinet keytar, the clavitar I'm not device. Sure, I'm not sure about the clavitar, but a, a portable clavinet, a more portable clavinet would be amazing. <laughs> well, you know, if it wasn't, if the mechanics of a real clavinet wasn't so fucking heavy, you could do it. Right. You got to realize it's a fucking harp and you got strings and you got a big Dude. wooden. You know what I'm saying? If you could find a way to lighten that load, then maybe you could do it. But my, my still question to you, not, right. are, it is, you it is a device. Are you willing to take less keys, you know, maybe one or two less octaves even on a portable version? Or, or do you not want to sacrifice it? Oh, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But absolutely you, will, not. You, I need you, will, you will fuck with a 55 key roads, though. Uh, yeah. yes, yes, if, if, yeah. if, it's a 54, actually, but yes. Yeah, 54. it's right over, by the way, I don't know if you know that, Borum, it's right over here. I'm just saying, you we, I have one, no I have one. You carry the gear, you, it's right, right. I, I, I understand, right here. I totally well, I, understand, yeah. but, yeah. but, but no, me, if I have, I'm looking at one right now. A, if I have, if, if I have a choice. I would definitely still take the 73 key. I mean, you know, I want ro I want roadies all the time. I still need, all this I, need, I need that. I need that. Of course. And it's, of course. Worth, it's worth the pain at the end of the night to have what I need in front of people. You yeah. know what I mean? That's fair. And, and, That's fair. and the climate is such a two-handed vibe, you know, and, and going. You know, yes. It's a two-handed yeah. It's a two -handed thing. If now, really if is. there was a way, if there was a way to bend the notes without a big fucking bar, <laughs> without the George Duke whammy you know, bar, you know what I'm saying? Tell you, man, yeah, can you, you Lammy? Can you? You, what, you can put the whammy bar on the clavitar. I, mean, I, you, I, can walk, you can walk. I, I do like. I do like how Bobby Sparks plays that shit. Oh yeah, his and his. Oh my God, I played his before. His is like. His but, is like. It's the way uh, he. It's the way he plays it, though. Right. He, right. He excels at playing it, and he makes it sound like he makes it shit sound like Jimmy Hendrix sometimes. Seth. You know. Oh yeah, yeah he'd be, he be on that absolutely all oh, day. Yeah, all absolutely. day, dude. I yeah, mean, we're uh, all here. I you know we go yeah, down the rabbit hole. I mean, I was like thinking about that whammy bar. Uh, it was just making me think about you know all the times we watched that George Duke video. All oh, the, dude. Yeah. But when I first saw that that's how he was doing it, I was just like, oh, my God, where do I where do I find one? And then I didn't play one until maybe 10, 15 years later. I didn't actually play one. 
you know, with the whammy bar until about 10, 15 years. And it, bro, it was like I had, I had been playing them all my life. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, so, I mean, that's great. So you know, it's, it's not just like when I hear you play this, the synth, you know, when I hear you take a synth song and you use the pitch, man, it's like the way, you know, the way I hear that I, I, I can tell that you hear music is through so much singing and bending notes through, through your whole life. Exactly. You know? And know exactly. That, like, like I, I, you know, when for me, my musical experience was like classical music and like the notes all having their own space. You know what I right. mean? And, well, this, and it's just, yeah, it's like harder, you know, but like, the, but you hear it so well like that, so you can really use it just like Bobby Sparks knows how to play the, you know what I mean? And bend right. the notes to express, you know what I mean? Exactly. I, 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 love, exactly. I love that shit. I well, this is, what I've, this is what I've always said about synthesizers or, or, or my relationship with them. They, a synthesizer is the median from my, my soul to your ears. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's what, when I, when I really need to say something, when there's something I really need to say or, or that my soul really needs to, to say and speak through the keyboards, that's when I can do that because I understand yeah. the median of how to channel certain things and how to use that in my playing, you know, like it was a long time that I wanted to do what everybody else was doing. And I was for a long time, I, I started my own growth. I was there. Every, every decision I had to make was, okay, what would George be doing here? Rather than, <laughs> rather than, rather than what would Nigel be doing? Right. You know, right. because, because the thing is, and that's what's so beautiful about synthesizer is that you will always have your own voice. Now, I I can get I can get this, I can get my shit to sound like George Duke if I want to. But he had a different method of doing it, so it will never sound like him. And he will never sound like me because I have a different way of getting to that. But we're all speaking the same language. We're all talking, we're all glorifying the same God. Yeah, I got to you know say something saying? right here. Uh, wait, yesterday. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's oh, go ahead. That you got it. You got it. No, that, that was it. That was it. No, no let's finish. I, I want to continue that thought of, well, since that God, which is yourself, you are that God. You know what I mean? Right. And, we all are. We all are exactly. different. We, we, we all are that God. So finding, that, finding that inner God. So it's like, you know, we talk about this expression and doing it. It's like, it's really the question is, how are you in touch with your emotions? And that's what right. it's all about, you know. It's and, like yeah, how and, much are who you, you are with your emotions and yourself, right? And like you could play all this shit and be all in your mind and plan this shit out and have a amazing career and famous and all this shit, but that doesn't really really mean shit. It's just like how much are you in touch with your emotions? And that's, exactly, that's, yeah, that's exactly. And, and that's true through anything that you play. That and, shows. Absolutely. And, anything. And, 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 and but the thing is, when you can use the pitch man and you could use a vocal thing, that's always a sign of being closer to your emotions because exactly. the voice is the first thing that fucking expresses that shit. Exactly. So it's just like, yes. Yeah. So it's like when I hear that shit, it goes right to my soul. When I hear you, when I hear George, you, when I hear you, when I hear Bobby Swartz, and I hear the vocal element through the keyboards and the bending of the notes and just the, the, the human humanity, like the pain and, and you know, that's like not in my mind, but it's like all in my heart, you know. Right. Yeah, and I, 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 I have to say, I just uh, Lammy just hit the home run. He put up in the corner. Uh, you can see George Duke, uh, you know, demonstrating the technique there. You can't hear the audio right now, but like it's oh, just, nice. oh, nice. Just, it's just, the, we're yeah. talking about artists yeah. showing who they are and their personality and their playing. It's just like you can see George Duke doing his damn thing in the corner, and it's a perfect example. Right, but that's what George does. He's yeah. the, like he's the he's the median of that. That's what he does. Yeah. I mean, he's you know, the greatest. I mean, I'm I'm actually gonna play this video at the very, very, very end of the show. Really? Just for, for the people, because now right. we can we can do this to them, Nige. It used to be right. <laughs> like if anyone was in the room, well, then they were gonna get but duped. That's, but that's what YouTube is for. Right. But and that's what imagine, YouTube is for. We're just YouTubing them over my thing. I got I got I got a question for you guys. <laughs> Go ahead. Because th th this is. Who's the other funky keyboard player that was named George? Say it again. Who was the other funkiest keyboard player that was named George? Uh, there's George Cables, who was pretty fucking... Uh, who else? George... Who am I thinking of? Dalto? I'm not sure he's getting that. 
it's, like it's just one of those things that's just gonna mind. that I'm just gonna sit around and think about, but like um like my brain won't actually work right. If I know the answer, it's like you don't know the answer. And it's like, no, 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 don't you know the answer? Oh, but you, but you know the answer to this one. Of course, like, I know the answer. Nobody would ever expect it. It's Bernie, Warren. Oh, he's a George. Oh, oh, oh well, Bernie, well, Bernie. I thought you said his name was George. Oh, that's his first name, bro. George. Is Bernie. it really? Come on, dog. I did not even know that. <laughs> You know, yeah. I had no idea if Bernie Bernie Worrell's real first name is George. He's George. a George. I did not. I Why did not you? know that. I did not know that. Hey, uh, Nige. By the yeah. way, by the way, Nigel. Every day. Oh, uh, th- speaking of people uh, who let their sound play through and and also weave together the sound of their influences, I, I this is great because I mentioned it in a comment thread. Uh, we played. Bloom was on last night. And he uh-huh. shared the track "Friends and Ragers." Ah, ah, yes, of course, because That's my Nigel. Track on that yeah, record. yeah, because Nigel, uh, of course, will love any track that he gets to lace a synth lead on, and that's why it's extra. <laughs> it, it's an extra happy uh, track for him, because I'm sitting but I there. Totally killed this shit. Yeah, not only did you totally kill it, but then you like fell into like a perfect Jan Hammer lick, and like it's like a dismount. It was like the Jan dismount. With the lick, yep. like perfect landing, and I told uh, Bloom for the benefit of the Butts Show audience that, by the way, anytime Nigel ever plays that lick, it's for me. It's not for anyone else. He didn't it's do it. It's literally just for Butts. It's correct. He plays that lick. He drops it in there, and it's for me. Just so you all know, that's not bullshit that I said yesterday. Wow, I've never had a lick dedicated well, to me like that. Every funny. time he plays it, bro. Butts, <laughs> if bro. Butts shows up to a gig. Whenever I'm doing a gig, and Butts shows up to a gig. And I see him. He'll he'll run right up to the stage so I can see him when I'm doing a when I'm doing a synth solo. <laughs> right, and every the synth second solo. Second I see him, I go in yawn mode. <laughs> <laughs> he becomes. I call him. I call him yawn slammer. There's like hammer, and he's slammer. Well, back when we used to get hammered a lot, I'd be yawn hammer. <laughs> What's mean back? And I'd be yawn Tom? slammer. <laughs> Do you rob? Rod Weber said my keyboard voice is an old drunk out of tune piano. Do what? Huh? Rod Weber said his keyboard voice is an old drunk out of tune piano. I don't understand what that means. I'm not sure. He just he wrote it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's a lot of comments. You, you could read all the comments if you wanted to, D Vibes. <laughs> yeah, what are the people saying? Go well one people. one that I wanted to give a shout out to is Ortega! Shout out to Pete Ortega <laughs> is watching. <laughs> I see him. I see you out there, bro. He gave us a good yeah. know yourself. He agrees. Pete knows himself. Know thyself. Pete is a killing uh, saxophone count. player. Played at Wally's. Huh? The, the circle of Wally's. Who yeah. was the cat that would play bass and sax at Murphy's after? Uh, Are you talking uh, about Alex? No. What was his nickname? Timo. Oh, Timo Shanko all Timo day Shanko. long. Timo. Yeah, no, What's up with I was Timo. I was talking about him the other night and I couldn't remember his name. Has anybody heard from him? Oh lately? yeah, Timo What's plays up? uh sax and bass regularly with a band called Dub Apocalypse. They play Sunday nights at uh Bull McCabe's. Or they used to and hopefully will be uh, again soon. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that, sound, that sounded uh <laughs> A little, a little sketch. Yeah, I mean, you know, things are a little <laughs> sketch right now, Nigel. That's all right, you know. Things, yeah. th- you know, things are a little weird right now. The problem with Timo is, is that like Timo is so old-fashioned. You know what I mean? Like he is like the most. The thing people don't know about Timo because he seems like a wild man, but really he's the right. most like studious and meticulous uh, student of music uh, that I've ever met. In fact, like, he is the one who, when you go to a local music store, uh, perhaps you could turn my audio down on the other side. I think that, I'm not sure whose is up, but everyone do an audio check because I can hear myself pretty loudly. But he's the can one. Can y'all, y'all hear me okay? I can hear you yeah. fine. But I can hear me fine on the other end of your phone. That's the problem. But, great. Wonderful. All right. All right. All right. What's going on with the quality yeah. audio quality? <laughs> oh, the, everything is great. <laughs> everything is great. But the end of the story is that Timo is the guy who you'll find if you're looking for, like, in a music shop and you find, like, a transcription of a Coltrane solo, like, somewhere. For years, right. uh, even as a young, a younger man, he was the guy who had written all the transcriptions. You'll see in the top corner, transcribed by T. Shanko. 
And I've heard, I've seen saxophonists meet Timo, and they're like, for years, I always just wondered who T. Shanko was. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like that's who crazy. is this guy? Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's still around, man. I need to get a hold of him. Yeah, he's, um, he's uh, an exceptional talent. Yeah, he's the fucking baddest. He really is. Let me ask y'all this. How much music have y'all made since y'all been in the house? Oh, bro, it's, it's been nonstop over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was only, like, I did do this thing where I tried to do at least, like, three beats a day. I just uh-huh. been on it, you know? Um, yeah, man, I've, been, I've literally been doing, like, three tracks a day. And I'm working, like, nice. I'm working on one. I'm working on one now. Me and the drummer, AJ Hall, who plays with uh, Cleary and, you know. I'm incredible, a, incredible drummer and bass player. Drummer. Me and him, yeah, we kind of have a song that's like, because we, when we go on tour, we like to listen to really horrible 80s music for some reason. I don't know why. But we, we, <laughs> no. Take, no, cause we, we, we make it fun of it, but also acknowledging of how dope it is and how dope it was. And we see the potential in it and, you know, maybe sort of reviving some of these things. Yeah, well, take, are, well by the way, are, are you describing that, like, uh, tune from the other day, the, uh, the, the the one from the Real Genius soundtrack? Is it like that? Because that song is oh, awesome. Well, no, yo, yo, you know? I, I, made, I made my 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 much younger girlfriend, not that much younger, but my girlfriend, my younger girlfriend, wow. listen to that. Wow. Because like, you don't know the 80s shit. Wow, you don't know bro. the 80s shit. Let's try that again. Wow. Let's, let's try that again. But I just I made hey, man, to, listen. You know, hey man. I, hey, man. So I know I made her listen to to, to the um, <laughs> Cutting Crew. <laughs> Sorry, I made her listen to the Bus show's been canceled. I just tonight. Must have been. You know, I, I made her listen to that one. We'll today. see. We'll see that that. I mean, shit. That was probably fucking ten ten. 10, 15 years before she was even born. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, no, she was born. That doesn't, that doesn't stuff. make that doesn't help the situation. Let's let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do anything right now. But no, so was it the the eighties eighties melodies? Like every part, like every every you know four bars, eight bars, they were into like a whole different new melody structure and everything. Nowadays, they they sing the same three notes for the whole song. Yeah, exactly. I, well, you know yeah. what? It's the same four notes. Pocket. Let's talk. Of, let's let's of, talk about it for a second. We, part of the reason that we talk about it so much is because, you know, we let's, we put our producer hat on and we're listening to the way people produced records back then. You know, like people like Quincy, people like George, people like, uh, you know, Leroy Hudson, people like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Maurice White. You know, like all that soul stuff from from the eighties. You know, and I'm speaking of like early 80s. I'm speaking of like 80 to about 84, maybe 85. And we're talking Luther, you know, we're talking like that whole Matt Adams thing. And we're listening to these things and how special they are and they really are because like this whole thing changed. Something changed, you know, from the vibe of the 70s. You obviously can tell when you hear something from the 70s and the 80s. I mean, it's like night and day. But yes. we're trying to find these things. Is, well, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. and, the, and the distaste of people who are either fucked up and trying to figure out how the thing works and then somehow make a song that becomes, you know, like that number one song, it's the cheesiest synthesizer worst. Like, if you couldn't hear the potential of it, you couldn't get through 30 seconds of it. Us, <laughs> we couldn't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's not something you would play at a hang. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, unless, right. it was, unless it was us. Right. I mean, I, well, I, 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 maybe, not, maybe, I'm, maybe not, dude. Because like a lot of that stuff, like, uh, like the music sound that like span go, goes all the way up to like you know, 80, 88, 89. There's still like this good yeah. 80s R and B as late as like 89, and it's like things right. were very interesting up until a certain point and then it just started to get mass produced so, and dumbed down so, it became, I mean, they marketed to we, the lowest common denominator so I, i'm starting to finally feel the the disconnect with pop music where i feel, really feel like i can't relate with it now i mean i'm 40 years old you know like i i mean and, and, and there's some shit i like now but like and you know all growing up in the 90s i love 2000 but like now like i'm not connecting with like the there's no pop music really that I'm really yeah. understanding the yeah. melody and, and like how it's working. It's like in the 90s, I, I felt it. 2000s, I felt 80s, I felt it. 
Right, you know I mean? but right. I, I'm really not feeling it more than I'll ever. I'll tell you one know. thing. I'll tell you one thing I learned, and I learned this from my kids. You know, like they call me, obviously they call me they call me an old head. That's what I am. Right. To them. Yeah. And, you know, we are. And like, like, always. We are. And, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like those cats that you see in the hood that like now you know like you'll see them and they got it they still got a jury curl and, <laughs> you know what i'm saying or oh, you see those cats in the hood that still rock you still jury curls and yeah. and, and, the, and the timberlands and you know what i'm saying they get stuck in a certain era yeah you know timberlands is still, i'm trying not to do because that's I'm, life. Trying to, I'm trying to i'm trying to see uh what in today's music they are using to be relevant and to be popular and use that in my message you know, so that's that's something I'm learning is like to pay attention to that. I necessarily don't like some of that shit, right. and he know I don't like it, but oh, I'm starting well, to be yeah, open yeah, to yeah, it but, because but, I'm yeah. watching him create, and this is his era, and he's creating right. under that pretense. So in that sense, I can take a minute and really look at yeah. like what's going on, and not completely herb it out. You yep, know, actually yep. give it an opportunity and give it a chance. Yeah, I mean, so that I can understand how I need to be relevant. Yeah, and I think you you're, you're connected more because you have kids. You know, you have you have a, a, a child, so it's like it makes you connect more. Like I don't have a kid to have that that connection. That real, you know, the, well, right. That's relate. a nice way in for you. Uh, you know, but uh, to speak to your point, <laughs> to to speak to speak to Borum, to speak to Borum's point. I mean, I haven't uh, I haven't watched the Grammys. Like music is my shit. And I haven't watched the Grammys in like five years. It's simply too painful. Yeah. So can can I ask you guys this? Yeah, do you sure. think do you think that before just before pop music was all genres and now they've made pop music its own genre? Do you think right. that has taken away from like the artists? that just have great music because that like pop music was at the same time the beatles and right. the jackson five well think and about this pop music pop music was called pop music because what is the yeah. what is the the long it's word popular. For pop, popular it popular. means popular music so every music was popular and now what they do is they try to like you know they take the music of the day Right, which is what it is now. That's what it is. Is this kind of music now is why they call it pop music because it's the music of the day. You know, uh, Tyler the Creator said something about they gave him best rap something, and he was like, he he got a Grammy for best rap album or something like that. And he's like, why can't my shit just be music? Why it's got to be rap? He's like, it's a it's a it's a it's a slap in the face. Right. To to, because because you got to understand this this music or whatever these people are creating are sometimes mostly coming from a really dark place sure. and for and yeah. for people to take for people to have the audacity to to label someone else's darkness or 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 not even darkness but struggle but you know path to label to label someone's journey is an insult yeah you see sure? Yeah, absolutely. Hey guys. I, I had that. I, I actually talked to. I saw Robert Glassman the other day and talking for a second. We were talking about the Nicholas Payton thing about jazz is four level. You know, it's just like, and and you know, just not the not the labels. But Robert was like, well, then if you know, his point is like, I feel that. But if like, how are people gonna know what they're gonna go to, to check out if they if they don't it doesn't have a label attached? To it? Like, yo, this is a jazz festival. You don't want to call it jazz. But then, how do people know what they're gonna go hear? You know what I mean, right? And then, yeah, yeah that's so, true. so you got a branding, you got a market. You have to. Well, the, I I just feel like the thing is, is like you have to, you have to for people, the layman, okay, for the layman person, you have to pretty much dumb down your expression. You don't have to dumb down your your artistry. You don't have to dumb down your music. But you have to dumb down the way that you say things. Maybe simplify <laughs> because, is a better way because, to put it. Because what happens is that it, in society today, people are more concerned with about how you tell them something rather than what you've told them. Whether it's the truth or not, they would rather, they would rather get on you about the way you said it rather than what you say. I use this example all the time. If we're hanging out, you know, and 
you got a big booger on your face. And I tell you, <laughs> you got a big booger on your face. Do I have, do I have face, a big booger on my face? Everybody laughs. Is... The, the, the question to ask yourself is, do, well, let me check myself and see. You know, rather than getting mad at me for calling you out in front of all of these people, I'm actually a real friend. Because I'm trying to save all of us from looking at that shit. Yeah. You see, no one wants to see that. No one wants to see that. Least and of all the person decide, the person whose face the booger is on. Exactly. If you decide if you decide that you want to be an asshole because of how I said it to you, then you can walk around with a booger on your face. Don't but no never mind to me. But right. you get concerned with the way that I said it rather than what it is that I'm actually saying. Is it the truth? You and know? Let, let's talk and about let, people, let's talk about this guys. Uh you know, the idea that uh you know, our, our Borum and I started off the conversation today talking about how, like, you know, the, the, this last 10 to 14 days have, like, changed me personally. Like, right. you know what I mean? And uh, on a lot of the change that we're all going through uh, is going to lead to, like, people, like, uh, you know, like, telling their own truths where they might have hold it back. I'm feeling like this, this like, you know, shit getting real is uh, kind of like a truth serum. And I'm just right. like, there's no uh, filter. Uh, I, you, okay, you know me pretty well. Uh, I've never really had much of a filter. Okay, <laughs> let's be right. real. It shouldn't be a filter though. Yeah, but whatever I, whatever I thought I needed I, is gone. And uh, I'm, just, I basically just, I have to be honest with the people in my life uh, about the things that are going on in my life. And we're gonna see people reacting right, to course. this in all kinds of ways. You know, friendships will be, uh, you know, f forged, reforged, broken. Right. Uh, you know, lives will be changed. Like things are going to be different, and uh, we, we just have to be open to all that. We have to. Everything's going to get more lo local vibe, and and you know the people that are really saving, saving our ass right now are like the farmers, the truck drivers, the nurses. You know, it's just like the most important people are like the people that we thought were like the least glamorous. You right. know what I mean? And it's, it's just, always like, the case. It's I, will say this, I will say this one thing about being quarantined and like being you know just like being in your own zone by yourself i've noticed that i've talked to a bunch of people uh making tracks and whatever you know that i normally would have talked to or well, you, to you would been on the with. road well yeah i've been on the road but at the same time i've had the i've had that time to do that and never took advantage of it but now I'm like, you know, it's crazy because I talked to I talked to Jeff Coffin, I talked to my friend Calvin Napper, who was the drummer for Frankie Beverly and Mays. Mm -hmm. I talked to uh, I talk I talked to a bunch of people, Marcus, Kraz, you know, like it's it's a shame that it took a worldwide pandemic to have called these people who I could have called at any time. To yeah. do some shit with, you know I mean, what I'm I saying? think I think that's and something that everyone can relate to. to. Do it because they ain't got shit to do either. Right, and that's the thing. That's the, that's uh, it's an amazing thing that I think we're all experiencing, is that uh, you know, like it's all humbling. of a sudden, I uh, uh, I think of someone, and I'm like, you know, my God, I have to call them. I need to talk to them to see if they're yeah. all right. And uh, you know, like, uh, and and it's like every day I sort of. And moving down the line and getting to people that I need to talk to, whether I reach out to them through Messenger or I reach out to them via phone. But I'm trying to stay in touch with people and I'm reaching out to people. And you're absolutely right. I've been asking myself, uh, you know, why is it that it takes a pandemic right. for me to uh, be in closer touch with the people that An I love? entire pandemic. You know, you right, know right saying? away, right away, it was like I had like a list of loved ones, and I just got through it like immediately, like, and it was just like, oh my god. And like, these, and think about this: these are the times where you think about all of the things that you took for granted. You know what I'm saying? Like we take for granted, we take for granted going down the street to hang out with a couple of our friends at a bar. We take for granted for going out to dinner, or you know what I'm saying, hanging out at the crib and passing the blunt. Yeah. You know, when, when we can, we, we're gonna be all crying when we can, when we see see each other again. Man, we go I'm, to the yes. I'm a hug. Yeah. Through waterworks, waterworks. Like I don't, yeah, I'm it, yeah. everybody. Like I, yeah, it's like I, I'm gonna tackle everyone uh, to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's how it's gonna oh, be. And like man. Nigel and me, I don't know what's gonna happen with us, bro, because well, I already hug you for five minutes at least when I oh, see yeah. you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's gonna be like okay. Get, we got what is what are these niggas doing? Like, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, <laughs> what is happening right now? Hey, but I'm gonna send you. Yeah. I'm gonna send you what I'm working on so you can hear it. 
Do you want me to play it, or do you just want me to hear it? Uh, actually, you know what? You can play it once. Yeah, but it, it gets saved, and then it gets played a thousand times. So. Ooh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right. So, uh, yeah, no, you can send it to me. Know, you can send it to me and I'll listen to it off air. How about that? I, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. I know a lot of listeners just got like, oh, fuck. It wasn't ready. <laughs> it ain't ready. It ain't ready. You know what I mean? I like, mean, it is kind of ready. I'm okay. Ooh, like, well, I mean, you know, then, then, like, then, then finish it up and we'll hear it two or three days from now. It's fine. All right. Let you know what I'm saying? I'm still, I'm still sending it to you. Now. Okay. But I'm not going to play it until you actually say I can play it. I need to hear Simon Says. I played that game. I was good at it. What's your email? B-U-T-Z Rage at Gmail. You know, if anyone has submissions, you know, feel free. You know, like, I'll give them a listen. But, you know, like, usually I go for what I'm looking for. So, you know, you can submit it and maybe I'll play it. I need stuff that's sort of like, uh, you know, under the radar. And it's like... What's you know that's actually kind of works out because I want to do these like unreleased rarities and these things that like don't then aren't licensed because screw the man if they want to mess with me over here right. we can put on a better show without them it's like I think I think the listeners would be happy to hear like a, a steady stream of like unreleased little right. tape bits from their favorite artists they're not going to get online huh a- anywhere else I'm yeah. okay with that so so Borum are you in are you in uh, Colorado. Yes, I am. You're in Colorado, in your in your Colorado. new house in Colorado right now. Quarantine. Quarantine Dem- in the got, house. Dem- has got the keyboard players, man. I gotta come. Yeah, I know, right? I gotta come. I gotta come out and hang out over at the crib, man. I mean, I mean all your bro- all your brothers live here. You got Dice out here, Schmeen, Steve. I, mean, I, I come hang out, man. I'm not living in Colorado, bro. I'm sorry. Can't do. Oh, that. I'm not. Yeah, I know. I know that. I know. It's, that, but you come visit as long as you want, man. Mountain lions and yaks and shit. Man, it's yeah. mountains, man. In the city, you don't see none of that. You don't I see none of that in the city, man. Right, 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 right. I mean, I, I can still go down the street and get some weed. Uh, you know, there's a you know, there's a lot of good parts about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that's a good part about it. Like, I want to, I want to yeah. move to 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 Amsterdam simply because oh, yeah. I can, I can go down the street and get some pancakes and. Uh, so blue corn pancakes and uh, 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 an ounce of weed and be good. Be I, 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 and weed. I got a I got a question for you. What what was the city in Europe that appreciated music the most? That you that really loved the shit the most this, um, on this on this tour. Well, um, the first the first show. As, even though it was a little light, the first show was in Scotland. I mean, you've been going to Europe with, with clearly re- re- recently too, so you're hitting Europe a lot in the last few years, right? Yeah, but there were a couple of places that I was that I went to on this tour that I hadn't been. So everybody was kind of looking to me to like, you know, where do we do? What do we, you know, what I'm saying, where do we go? You right, know, right, right. You know what's happening, and um, I was able to help out for for a little bit, but there were places that I hadn't gone that I needed to explore on my own. And really gave me some good energy. Like gave me, like I wrote some shit out there. Like it was, a, it was a couple of days where I was just writing lyrics that just come to me, and that doesn't happen, not to me at least. Like it, you know, it takes me a long time. But you was inspired. But I was really inspired by just seeing different parts of the world, and um, I really liked Barcelona. Barcelona was Dude. the people. The people in Barcelona really, really dug it. Um. The people in what was it, Frankfurt? Frankfurt, Germany was awesome. Frankfurt. Uh, what he <laughs> And you're right about that. Um, uh, That's Berlin what's up. Was cool. Berlin was Berlin was cool. All of Germany was really cool. Switzerland was cool. Um, the last gig we had in Copenhagen was like the weird one. And that was the one when all the shit was getting heavy. Right, you know right. Everybody's saying? freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. Everybody's like, yo, this is the last gig uh, in town for a long time. Like, the people that work at the at the venue were telling us this. Wow. And, wow. You don't yeah, want to hear was, that it, before you go out because it's almost it got, like, yeah, it that's scary. why I even play the gig. 
Yeah, it got it got really scary. I mean, now we know. It's like hindsight is twenty twenty. You know what I mean? Like now we know, but there were a lot of people that like you know went went and uh, you know a lot of things happened. Like in Spain, that that soccer event, you know, like that that, that it was probably you know happened you know like a, like what like several days after you. Right. Like, but but maybe not. Like I don't even know what the date is compared to the date there. And it was that show like led to something terrible in that you know. So it's hard to know what right. really happens. Like, we didn't know. I mean, we weren't. Uh, I think the people who made those decisions by and large, uh, were kept in the dark by their governments. I mean, the proper, they, uh, not every government, uh, in almost all cases, everyone failed to react to the warnings that they were given, thinking exactly. that it wasn't as, you know, uh, something that they was going to come all the way to them. They figured it would just be something that would be relatively contained, and it just wasn't. Right. And it wasn't. It wasn't. And it's crazy because everybody saw it. I think everybody saw it that the United States was going to be uh, prepared for something like this if it were oh, hell no. happen. Like, they all had their money on us, and we dropped the ball. Yeah, so right. Hard. Right. They were following our lead, and we weren't we weren't nervous, so they weren't nervous. And the thing right. is, is that we were nervous. The people who knew were, were, were screaming. And, uh, you know, uh, the Trump administration thought it would be inconvenient to react to something that no one could see in the middle of a... Uh, he's trying to project strength in an election. And he just said, this right. is bad for me, so I'm not going to acknowledge it. And he's still doing yeah. it. He's still doing it, saying uh, by Easter we'll be back and running. Whereas today was the worst day uh, yet uh, in America, where our, and our numbers have soared to number one in infected in the uh, world. And uh, it, it's really uh, yeah. it's a, it's a tragedy we're just getting our brains around. And America is number one? America in, has in, moved into first place, in, passing today, China and, and Italy. Today. And, and fatalities. Yep. In, uh, in infected numbers. And, uh, and yep. fatalities, I would imagine. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's De there. Definitely not fatalities yet. Yeah, okay, maybe not. But I know that infected numbers, I mean, the well, numbers I mean, are the numbers. It's just like the percentages of the percentages. We're going to be did, there soon. I did look at the percentage of people who got infected and the people who died. And I'm, and I'm speaking in terms of, like, uh, open cases closed cases of people who are, uh, are still alive who have had it and the percentage of people who have it or who have had it got rid of it before yes. you know, like that percentage is higher than the people who died is basically what I'm saying. Oh yeah, it's like 84% uh, like after closed cases recovered or were dismissed and then like 15% have died which is which is still kind of a lot. Yeah, right. here here are the uh, the numbers. I think the cases have reached 531,000 uh, globally, uh, which is just a, a huge, Crazy. huge number. And uh, the, it's the, the report was that, yes, the U.S. now has the most reported uh, corona cases in the world. Wow, that's uh, great. It says uh, CNN is now reporting that there are at least uh, 82,100 cases reported in the United States. John Hopkins uh, has that estimate of 85,000. China is currently reported uh, 81,000. Italy is in wow. third with 80,500, essentially. These numbers are constantly changing, and they're fluctuating. But, uh, yes, we're in the lead. Isn't that great? America, uh, fuck yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, boy. You know what I mean? Like, look, we, we, we've been doing a great job, like, you know, spinning this, uh, you know, straw into gold up here in uh, quarantine studios, trying to have a good right. time. You know what I mean? I, like, Quint, you know, Quentin Quarantino? <laughs> Quentin Quarantino up here. Like, I'm trying not to get upset, you know, like, you know, like, uh, it's What's like, up? go ahead. Snoop Dogg and Quarantine? <laughs> uh, that's a little bit of a reach, I don't know. Him. That's a stretch. I think right, yeah, man, yeah, damn. Yeah. But, You're but usually better than this. actually really good at that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Born, born, Nate, born, Nate, Nate, born, born, born Nate Dogg and Quarren G. Quarren G. Born, <laughs> but when Borm hits, he hits. How about Quarantino Vanelli? Is that better? Quarantino? Uh, that's good. <laughs> that too, but I, I, I appreciate that one because of who it is. Because of who Qu it is. That's why I did it. Qu Quarency Jones? No. Uh, no, that's not Okay, good. no. 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 Uh, <laughs> Quentin this, Quarantino, this, is, this. Is, is that's that works. Quarantino works. 
Or like but, um, Jim Florentine, Jim Quarantine. It's not that great. You know, this far. I don't know. Oh, you know what I've been well, hurting? That, no, this one works. works. No, but this one works. You know what I've been thinking of is uh, every time I hear quarantine sometimes, I think of Florentine Pogan. Well, that's what I think, too. Quarantine See, of course, Pogan. that's what you that think. Every one. time, that's what I think. I'm like, Quarantine Pogan. See, we got we to gotta put them on the Zappa. They ain't about that Zappa life. Wait, wait, come on. Like, come on. Come, wait, I'm going to. I'm talking about, I'm talking about you Zappa. and me. I'm talking about you and me, but. Oh. Oh, see? I mean, what are you trying <laughs> to tell me? Oh, my birthday is the same day as Frank Zappa. When's your birthday? December 21st. The 21st I am of December. I am the winter solstice, so I am the coldest cat on the planet. Ha! <laughs> huh. That's a good birthday. That's yeah, Samuel birthday. Jackson too. Hey, Sorry. have you guys seen that movie, The Banker? The Banker? Tell me about The Banker. Wait, I heard no. about it. It's a great movie. It's a movie. It's, a, it's Samuel Jackson and um, what's my man name? Anthony Mackie. And it's about black. It's about these two black dudes buying up all of these buildings in. Um, in like the, the early 60s during the civil rights movement and stuff and they bought all of the, they they were like fuck it we just gonna start buying banks because banks weren't giving them loans so we're just gonna buy the building of the bank and that's what they were doing and like it's it's a whole story behind it you gotta check it out but it's really good it's a really good movie soundtrack's amazing yeah you i'm know. looking at it right now i'm looking at it right soundtrack now. got me though cool yeah I you know, know like new oh go ahead What's so that new thing on Netflix too? Tiger. Oh Tiger my King? God! Oh my what is God! That? Oh my what was God! It called? Fucking! It is! It is absolute madness. Me and Jamie watched. We watched the whole seven episode series. Yeah, Tiger King. It is fucking crazy. This dude it's is dope? out of his mind. Yeah, it's dope. It is. Right, I'm gonna check it out. Don't, don't say anything else. I'm gonna check. I'm it not out. saying nothing else. That's it. Yeah, I mean, you know, right. I got the Nigel Hall approval. I think that's like in the Family Feud, like Cause, watching. Cause I watch a lot of TV. Yeah, watching Tiger King. <laughs> watching Tiger King right now is like uh, probably like one of the at least top five answers of how people is uh, are getting through the uh, quarantine right now. Uh, that is definitely yeah, like it seems to be that, and then maybe like you know maybe in the top five that might be like one number one or two, and I'd be happy if I was somewhere around number four or five. I think maybe that's where we are right now. I'm gonna tell you straight up though, it's midnight, and I know that. That Ozarks is coming on. So, all right. Well, well, before you go, I'm not, not going. Home, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't oh, good, I'm good. just saying. I want. I need to know what your favorite, what your favorite Stevie Wonder record is. Oh, Intervisions. Intervisions. Does it, cha- does it change it. over time? Do you do it go in and out? Because that's what it does for me. I I have well. I literally well, almost wore the songs in the Kia Life is T-shirt today. Going to be my favorite record, but sure. there are records yeah. that I that I, you know, sway back and forth to because all I mean, of those records are so great. Like, Music of My Mind is one. I yes. thought it was only yeah. about the 70s, but In Square Circle Square 85, Circle. Oh, I love it. Yeah. It's perfect. Oh, I love it. crazy. Dude, I, I think I like Hotter Than July. Hot, hot, yeah, hot yeah, all, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's... Hard Time Love, it's incredible. As and grown-ups, we can now talks, appreciate you know, those more. Miles Davis and, and, Prince, those, and people who change music. Stevie Wonder has changed his music so many times. Right. Yeah. It's like insane. I, like I remember, yeah, I remember when we were younger. You, I remember when we were younger. We used to like, you know, we used to think in terms of like the '70s and like the '70s aesthetic. But like, it might have been harder to appreciate those later albums. But it's definitely something that you figure out as you can move along. Right. Yeah. Well, Stevie, you know, Stevie was such a Stevie was, such, and here's the beautiful thing about Stevie's writing. His writing was so major and so like it was just so dope. So prolific that if anybody did his music, it would sound amazing. He basically did all of the work for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. He did it all. But, that's that's why it's, he's one of the most covered he, artists in, in, in the world. But, but, but you, you have to understand, Stevie Wonder is the only guy that has never written a bad song. Yeah. You know what? I think I have to agree with that. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard a Stevie Wonder song. Agreed. That I haven't played over again. 
I think that's a good job for the uh, for the listening audience. Like, if anyone, could, mean, if, if, no, no, hold say, on, I hold on a second, guys. This. Hold on a second, guys. Let me just say that uh, I want to ask the listening audience uh, if uh, they have any suggestions for bad Stevie Wonder tunes, and we can argue with them. No, there's no such there's no such thing. They don't. They they don't. It's a challenge. And even there's, the bad ones are dope. Yeah. Yeah. Even the bad ones. This goes back to what I was saying about the '80s shit. Like even these fucking songs that. This, um, you know, the songs themselves. Oh, think about this. Did y'all know that you know that Stevie song? All I do. Love that song. Yeah. Yeah. Love that right. song. Did you know that he That's wrote that song? Favorite. Did you know that he wrote that song when he was 16 years old? And the first person who sang it was Tammy Terrell. Wow. No wow. way. And is there a recording? Version, there is a version. There is a Funk Brothers recording. Um, wow! In 1966, yeah. I'm putting that oh, this what? fucking song, and it is the dopest. I'm telling, you, bro, James Jameson oh. is going oh. for the jugular. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? James yes. Jugular is his new name. <laughs> <laughs> James Jugular. Wait a minute, I can. I'm gonna give. I, I think I can get away with playing like two bars of this. Hold on one second. Like, We'll play, also, yeah, the, we'll also play the, greatest, the, greatest, the greatest longest career, because his career since he was a kid until he was an older man, it's incredible. Stevie Wonder, I was like, there's no one has a long, a longer career. 12 years old. 12 years old. Well, actually, well, yeah. yeah the other right. person would be Michael Jackson. Yeah, but he didn't well, sustain no, it Preston as long as Stevie. Also. Billy well, Preston no. also. Yeah, Billy Preston. Billy yeah. Preston. Yeah. Yeah, see, you, you guys can't hear it. I told you at the beginning of the show that you can't hear my audio, but I am jamming out right now to... Uh, exactly, Do you hear yeah, it? I can hear it, dude. It is such a Motown tune this way. It's such a Motown tune. It's him that kills that shit. And it's the same tune with the changes that are it's way the ahead of their song. time. These changes yeah. are way ahead of the time. And you know what? And, that, and it didn't work. It was one right. of those tunes that didn't work. That Barry Gordy was just like, nope, we're not doing that. We're not that putting that is out. unbelievable. <laughs> Wow, very cool. Steve, I did Stevie's not like, know that. This. I will really... say, music of my mind also is one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously songs in the key of life, but I mean, that that's one of those records that, you know, go without saying. You know what like, song you know, on that record? You, 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 uh... These are like the holy books of Moses. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I hear, I hear other is... records after I listen to other people's music and then I go back to CD1 and I'm like, it just, Nothing sounds as good to me. Nothing sounds as complete. The musicianship, the lyrics, everything. It's just there's no, there's not a satisfying of a musical experience it, 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 that can be found. To okay, me. let's go around. Okay, let's go around the, let's go around the room. Top five Stevie songs. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh wow. Oh man. Wow, man, we got top five. I, mean, I gotta, I gotta choose one off of fulfilling this. You know, fulfilling this is last one. Um. Man, just, is that, that right? Off the dome, off the dome, off the dome. Yeah, I'm not even gonna look up the lineup because it's all like, uh, it's all like so surreal. You can't look up the lineup. You can't, can't look, look up, up anything. I'll say okay. okay. Uh, Overjoyed. Uh, okay. okay. Sure. That's one. Oh yeah. Nice one. We gotta be quick, guys. Well, quick, is... quick, quick. Just instinct. We're not gonna judge. We're not gonna right. judge. I got. Um, don't you worry about a thing. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Too high. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, you ain't you ain't done nothing. Yeah. Yep. What was it? Where were you when I needed Sup you? That's super right, right, right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. I think for Jesus me, Jesus, children yeah, of America. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I got creeping Ooh. in mine. I need creeping. Yes, creeping. Yeah. What, what, what's what's I'm happier than the morning sun. Beautiful song. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful do, do, song. Do. That's the one. I love that one. Happy birthday. Yeah, you know, well, I, I, I got a thing. I got this thing from Miss Stranoto. Miss Stranoto. Yeah. I mean, I oh, mean, you know what a song I was going to say this a second ago is also uh, off. Uh, you know, uh, on music of my mind is evil. I don't think that song gets enough uh, real respect. It's so oh, yeah. powerful. That's a, I mean, that's a real deep cut. Yeah. My, my girlfriend says. Uh, cut my cut. girlfriend says. I just called to say I love you. Nice. It's a song. Yeah, that's a great song. Yeah. That is a that's fucking a amazing song. song. I mean, that's basically, uh, you know, Stevie, Stevie wrote things that are, and when we say, like, simple and simplified, like, writing songs about simple things, uh, I just yeah, called to say but, I love you but, as a thought, and that's, these, like, it's a complex are song. Not, are but not listen. not simple to No, play that's, that's what I'm saying. You talk about, talking about, about the ideas. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. 
We're all it's, talking about it's one at of once the most here. famous songs of all time, and he has somebody else start with the lead vocals. Sunset of my life. Yeah, yeah. That, that I've never. I don't know who this singer is, and like what that's pop Jim stars Gilstrap. like trap. You see, this is right. Nigel and, Hall, and ladies big, and gentlemen. He knows these things. It's a big move by Stevie Wonder to do that, to not to, to take his ego out of it and be like, no, I want you to sing to do the first, you know, verse. You know, right. well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I love, love it. You know, Stevie, yeah, yeah, I love Stevie, that stuff. I've never Stevie's heard Stevie's mind is like on a whole nother like universe of like com complex mm-hmm. because like he writes songs that I can appreciate I can. as a keyboard player that has changes. His songs right. have changes. For real. You know, it's, a lot of people's songs don't have as many changes. Core changes. He has a lot of changes. And I mean, like, it, these are like, you know, I, I see a lot and of And they're not players, easy they, to play. They, they, no, a lot of guitar players are like, man, I can't do that. I can't play those chords. I'm like, oh, well, well that, what, what, what am I supposed to do with that? That ain't my fault. Let me see. My top five, my top five TV songs are uh, right off the top. Right off the top. No, don't um, look at no list. No list. Superwoman. Yep, that's there. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, visions. Ooh. Um, all is fair in love. Sure. Mm. The ballads. Um. Uh. 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 uh as. Oh, yes. As, as, as ordinary, ordinary pain. Ordinary wow. pain. You know, I like summer soft ordinary too pain. a little bit. Look, there's a line in that song. He says, uh, "Tell her you're glad. Tell her you're glad. It's over in fact." Can mm. she take me mm-hmm. from the pain she brought she you back? back. Like, you ain't never, listen, you can't write that if you ain't never gone through that. Like, take this and then take mm-hmm. that with you. But I will say, and I've always said this, and I know people are probably going to think I'm sacrilegious by saying this, but I don't care. I know that Stevie Wonder became a completely different singer after he heard Donny Hathaway. I'm with that. Oh, and I, I think every, everyone, and I everyone rethought their yeah. uh, vocal cords when they I heard Don. Prove it to you. Yeah, yeah, but I, I feel like what separates <laughs> the, the one thing like, that separates yeah. them is is like Stevie's keyboard playing and like his like his no, whole like no his, his not, whole no. like. Just, just, just I love the way Donnie throat. plays. Yes, you, you, Don, yes. Donnie, you can't even like come. You can't even like draw too much of a of a of a battle between the two of them. You can't compare. Yeah. You can't compare the keyboard playing of Donnie and Stevie. Donnie was classically trained. Donnie yeah. could write. Donnie could write concertos. Okay, he was writing yeah. concertos before he passed away. Okay. Yeah. But Stevie taught himself. So there's that there's that vibe already because someone who teaches themselves has a different method of playing that no one else can have. You know what I'm saying? For instance, they have a different tone. It's like when you hear guitar players who are right-handed and left-handed. Yeah, yeah, like Jeff Lockhart. No one sounds like Jeff Lockhart. Thank you. That's exactly Nobody what I'm sounds like Jeff Lockhart. You see what I'm saying? So, but his writing, that's the only thing that I think stunted Donnie's success was not only the fact that he was uh, mentally compromised, but he had, you know, he was mm-hmm. too smart for his own good. He was too smart. And and Stevie, being around Motown since he was 16, you know, he got to drop on these fools quick and young. Yeah. You know? But, but Donnie also, he had Maurice White because it's like, that was like the original Earth, Wind and Fire. Well, no, he has, he, has Fred, he has Fred White. He just shot Fred, Fred White. White. Sorry, that was the sheriff in Tombstone, Fred White. Oh. <laughs> String him well, up, Fred, get a rope. Fred White. Because, because like, um, well, Maurice wrote, wrote songs, and, like, they shot him for Donnie Hathaway so he could get signed. Dude, like, there, there's a version of, like, on Earth, Wind & Fire's first, first record. Before Philip Bailey and before the Dead yeah. got really in there, they did uh, everything is everything, you know. And I mean, right? Like, well, no, that was that, That's a Donnie too. Donnie wrote that. Yeah. No, with with, more, with Maurice because like they, they had. A, I'm trying to remember the name of the band that they had. But Wait, like, does, that does, was, does like, the, the young original. lion does the young lion know something the old lion doesn't know? That that was the original band. Can we get like, a fact that, checker that out there. Look at the, look at the credits. 
and you will see that Donny Hathaway wrote Everything Is Everything. Yes, but maybe I don't know. But you you are right. They did play that song on that record, on that Earth, Wind, and Fire record. Yeah, but it was a Donny. Okay. Song. All right. Are there no CV Donny collaborations in rec- in recording? No. Actually, yes. Really? Actually, yes. Yes, there are. Wow. But 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 okay. Here's the story. You guys ready? Ready. So. The, there's a record. There's a record called. Um, it's the second Roberta Johnny. Okay, it's the one with um, uh, the closer I get to you. Uh, uh, what's the other one? You are my. You are my heaven. Back together again. Stevie wrote "You Are My Heaven," and that was the night. The night that he sang that in the studio was the night that he killed himself, and that was the first Stevie Donnie kind of collaboration because i think here's my theory That's this intense. is not this is yeah it is intense i talked to james and Tume about this james and Tume was the producer of that record he said that donnie was in the studio singing the song that stevie wrote right singing it crushing it had the golden voice he was murdering it and then just out of the blue he screamed and he ran out of the vocal booth, and uh, James went to find him in the in the hallway of the studio, in the corner, sitting on the floor crying. Oh, and he was like, "What's wrong, brother? What's you know what's happening?" He's like, "They trying to kill me and two mate." And he's like, "Who?" And he said, "White people." And he said, "He said it, He said they got my brain hooked oh, up to a God. machine and they're trying to steal my music and steal my sound." And my, th- I, let me finish Whoa. the story. Now. Yeah. Yeah, then I'll get into my theory. So I've heard a lot of these. James M. Tumay, James M. Tumay canceled the, se- or oh, not canceled. He stopped the session. He's like, all right, Donnie's not, you know, he's not here right now. We got to stop the session. Sent everybody home. Twenty minutes later, they all got a call that he jumped out of his window. Damn. Man. Now my theory is, is due to the business. And everything. Donnie was never really able to, you know, be be as successful as his counterparts. You know, he wasn't able to do that because of maybe his mental capacity may have been a part of it, but also his, um, you know, his songwriting was not Stevie's, but he had Stevie's voice. Now, Donnie could steal a song from you like that. He stole Superwoman from Steve. That's as far right. as I'm concerned, Superwoman by Donnie is the one. Yeah, that, well, well, it's, well, he does well, the back and, half, and but not he kills it. From, not taking anything from Stevie Wonder, obviously, because we all know Stevie's a fucking genius, okay? I'm not negating the fact that Stevie is who he is, but at the same token... No, you're just ele- you're elevating uh, Donnie a little bit there. That's all. Well, yeah, because no one else does. Right, no exactly. Does He's unsung, because... unsung hero. Right, and no one else does it because they are afraid to say that Stevie stole it from Donnie. I'm not afraid to say that because it's clear. If you listen to him, it's clear. Listen to fucking My Sharia Moore, right? And then listen to um, uh, Talking Book, and you will hear... Two completely different singers. Hey, and, and not only that, tell Nigel. Tell me I'm wrong. Not, not only that, Who Nigel. No, no, I got another one for you. Uh, look at the, uh, the the way he changed his style and the hat he was wearing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You're right. Right? Not that, not, that, not that Stevie. I'm just saying, like, you know, he was clearly inspired. What's wrong with saying that? Did I lose everybody? I feel like I can't hear them no more. Yeah, but there's still the call still there. Well, it, oh wow, the call failed. Okay, cool. Oh, there's Nige. Let's bring him back one at a time, folks. This is what we do. All right, we got Nige. We're gonna bring him back. I see. Yeah, somehow, uh, we. Uh, I'm gonna here's Borum. Hold on. Let's merge them together. Let's see if, if Vibes back. figures this out. We're back. We're back. Scott Bakula. <laughs> yo, yo, everybody's still here? Yeah, we're still here. It's just uh, so, we I haven't mean, got I mean, D Vibes back yet. Oh, here he is. Hold on so one second. Nigel, I mean, would you Hold say on. it's almost like when John Coltrane came wait, to wait, the Wait, 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 guys, guys, guys. I got to pick up Vibes. Everybody was influenced by him. 
and they change their style, you know, giving homage and paying, tipping their hat to train and being like, you, 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 well, you, I you, think that I think it was Charlie first because train got it from Charlie, right? But I'm saying with, with, when you train, talk about Johnny Hathaway influencing Stevie Wonder, you know, people get influenced and it's okay. You know what I mean? Well, that's the perfect example of being influenced by something or someone and taking that influence and doing your thing with Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. That when takes us back to that. You, when people hear you, they know it's you. For in, like, right. for instance, as piano, as keyboard players, yeah, we don't have an instrument that really um, exemplifies our touch and our tone. You know, this is this is an inanimate object, and we make it do what it do. But when you hear Herbie, you know it's Herbie, don't you? So exactly. Yeah, so you hear let, him let, in let's uh, let's saying. Let, so let's circle back to what we were saying before about you know how it's really about being in touch with your emotions. So so I think that when we hear these artists for the first time, they they make us feel more comfortable about being in touch with our emo- own emotions because right. they did it, and they, they they showed us a little way to get there. And be like, yo, here's here's how I found myself, and you could use that. You you could use that guide, that that path to find yourself, and then figure out who you are from there. You know. Hey, hey uh, hold right. that hold that thought one minute. I gotta get D vibes. Hold on. D vibes is back. Thank you. Uh, you you feel me on that, Nigel? I definitely feel you. That's that's, I mean, okay, that's so the whole I, point of why we do what we do. Yeah. Because we want to we want to feel that feeling that we feel when we listen to the people who we're inspired by. Yep. And, 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 and you're, you're breaking the ice for the people that can't move, that can't express themselves. Exactly. And you're showing them a way that, that, that you're allowing you, them, you're allowing them into that world. That's the yes. only way that you can explain to someone who is not a musician and who is not able to do the things that we, that we do what it feels like to do what we do right so in the case of you know but when you in the case of artists inspiring another artist it's another pathway like you're just saying like how donny hathaway could have inspired steve wonder or very well may have you know it's like he's showing another depth to the soul that he discovered and then he's given just like trained to just like bird did you know bird and bird and right. took it you know and wrote, ran with it you know, and made his own voice from that. You know. You know what I find. Right. You know what I find is really interesting is that, like, in two cases, George Duke, where he said like a, a couple like specific words to Nigel about like, you know, doing exactly this and taking. What, oh, I'll you know, tell you exactly what he said. To yeah. Me. Well, y'all tell, tell, tell it. Tell it. He, this is what he said. He said to me, I was, I'll tell, I'll tell a little bit of the story. I used to have a radio show of my own in, uh, in Maine when I lived in Maine. Oh, I didn't know that. I was I I was I was able to interview him for like an hour and it was like the best hour of my life. Wow. And yes. I, I got to talk to him and I was playing like all the old shit, like all the shit that I love, you know, like behind the interview, you know. And yeah, I was saying I to him, he could tell he could tell from the from the interview that like I was a full on George Duke Herb. Okay. <laughs> the biggest could, and, in and fact. I, I, did, the I biggest. did not fucking hide it, okay? And and he said to me, he said, you know, despite the fact, this is what he ended the interview. He said, despite the fact that you love the, for example, you say you love me and love the things that I do, somewhere in that, you should be able to find your own voice and bring mm-hmm. me to the next star and do things that I can do. Wow. And he's like, wow. and you can do that. And I'm telling you, when he said that, to, like I'm talking about oh, it, wow. response right now. He That's said, he, it, he it gave me... He created a monster when he said that. He sure, really did. Yeah. It's like he yeah, gave, he's yeah. like he's like he gave he's like it's like your dad giving you the keys to the vet. He yeah. lit that yeah. fire. He's like, here you go. He's like, don't crash it. Right. Wow. Be careful. You know, Take it seriously. I've crashed quite a few vets. I'm a I'm gonna be honest. I've <laughs> a couple of them. You know. Yeah. You got good. You got good funk insurance. The insurance you want for the funk. I got that. I got that. I got that. Uh, what's that? Uh, limo emo. <laughs> you know, I gotta be honest. Uh, you know, and and I don't know if you know this. So we talked about this the other day on the show, Nigel. Is that uh, uh-huh. is that D vibes uh, heard like very similar sort of words from his hero, Bernie Worrell. Yeah, really? Man. Yeah, dude, I got to open up say? for Bernie, Bernie Warrell, man. I was, I was in Berkeley. I was like, I run, 
from we was playing at Club Church. So we were opening up, we get there, I'm like, Oh my god, this is this is blowing up. Check it. Yeah. This is before I was playing keytar. They have like my my band, they forget my keyboard stand. So the whole gig, I'm holding the keyboard, I got it propped up on my knee and I'm playing it. <laughs> and after I was talking to Brian, he's like, Man, you shit. You got this shit. Don't let nobody tell you shit. That's your shit. Don't take no shit. Because you can do that. That's what he said. Yep. That's what he said. I was on Jam Cruise one year and he was on he was on and he got he caught up with me like three days in, me and Jamie. And we're tripping on mushrooms. <laughs> we're gone. <laughs> it was so Jam Cruise, folks. Me, he came up to me and he was like, Man, He's like every time I see you doing something, you're always killing it, man. He said, but, oh. but he's like, he's like, but but I want you to understand something. He said, this don't belong to you. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. what? I was like, but oh, but he was he was speaking truth. He was like, yep, yep. belong to you. He's like, God is using you as a vessel. Mm. So no matter how mm. dope you think you are, mm. this don't oh. belong to you. Yeah. And then he took out his piece and then he started shaking. He took his teeth out. Bro, it was the wait, wait, what did he I, take out? He took out his fucking teeth. Yeah. Yo, he gave you a talking Bro, to right there. I can't make that up. No. Wait, up. in front of your lady? Yes. What the on fuck? Mushrooms. And she was tripped out too. She was, if she wasn't <laughs> I would put her on the phone right now. And so she could tell you that this happened. Wow. <laughs> it fully happened. That's awesome. That is that's crazy. crazy. What a crazy but, that's what, but, but that's the thing, though, is we don't need like it was. It was good. I think it was good for us to have our heroes tell us this. But yes. when you get to the point where we are as as music as musicians, but as men, you realize yeah. that you know you you get tired of wanting to make other people happy because what happens is is you lose the joy of why you do it because we do it for us yeah yeah this the work the work is us getting up at six in the morning and taking three planes to get to the gig yeah you see that's what we get paid for the gig is free exactly yeah i was telling telling someone man they like they're actually like man who's the biggest name you've ever played for and the biggest person i've ever played for is god because God gave me a gift. <laughs> Thank you. And I get to be in God. Thank you, Devise. I roll I with nobody but God. You know? squad. He's always headlining the show. He's I love always that. headlining. God in the squad, as, bro. As killer, as killer, I can be on stage. I can wake up in the morning and not be able to play. Right, you know? Exactly. You can wake up one morning and you not be able to use your hands and nothing. And be pissed. Exactly. You, you guys got both got so much more playing that in front of you that you got to give to the world. There's a lot more work to do. There's a ton of more work. Yeah, amen we're not that. done until we're not here no more. You know, yeah. like it's not it's not even a question. Like you, we we are put here to do this. The work is ahead of us, gentlemen. Yeah, we're the Levi. Did you get Did we're you get that track box? Uh, oh, did you send it? Okay, but I'm not playing it today, am I, or am I? Go ahead, I'm gonna let you play it. You can play. Yeah, it. Uh, I'm gonna tell you guys right now. It feels, you know, we've been, I've been, ho- you know, quarantined, but it feels like I'm hanging out with the, with a crew right now. It feels good, man. I just gotta let you guys know. Thank you for this uh, experience. Yeah, yeah, man. I definitely tested positive for missing the homies. That's for oh, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I tested, I tested positive. Yeah, it was a great lyric so you, in, a, you, in a Prince song where he says, uh, where uh, George Clinton and Prince collab on a song, and uh, George says, I'm testing positive for the funk. That's what he says. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> I'm That's testing positive for the funk. Can y'all hold on one second? Hold on. Yeah. You know, Bar- Barbie, no, man. I'm, as Prince heads out there. Stuff, man, I, can't, I can't play nothing else with the funk, man. Oh, man. That's what you was born to do, baby. Yeah. It's a, you it's gotta a do that, thing. man. Well, what, what has she been working on, man? What, what you man, I'm trying on? to work on my life, man. I'm trying to play some piano, trying to make some tracks, make some beats, trying to maintain a career, you know. 
tell, tell us about your your the keyboards you have in your your station, like in, in your station. Um, right, right. Mm. It, it it morphs slowly over time, but right now I got uh some of the couple of the prophets, the prophet six, prophet twelve, and then an OB six. I got a Fender Rhodes, nice. and uh, if land is saying VC, damn over here. I got a VC three forty, uh, which is the new Behringer vocoder mm. synth. I got a Juno sixty. Um, have a mm. grand uh, Kawhi oh, grand wait. piano at at the you know yeah. downstairs. I got a Wurlitzer one forty B. Um, it's the Ray Charles model. Um, and I got a Micro Korg XL Plus. You know, I have one of those. On the geese. Yeah, and then I got a um, you know, the little Yamaha Reface too, that I yeah. you know, that I use. So, no, do you like, do you name your keyboard? I name. My I keyboard. I do not. I have not come up with names for them. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think I that that's a thing. I have not named my keyboard. I mean, you know, they, they already have a name. You know what I mean? Yeah, I named my right. I named my uh, a keytar because uh, Vibes had named his others. I think uh, he's got. I feel like a keytar is something that you would name, but I don't have yeah. a keytar, so I don't yeah. So remember. Vibes is big main keytar. Uh, I, I have definitely yeah. been toying I'll... with the idea of getting one. Yes, we talked about come this. Come on, do Let's, it, bro. Come on in, Borum. Come you to gotta, Keytar you Nation. Step outside of the rig and step out. Come to Keytar Nation. Go for... Wait, come I just remember... Keytar. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Deshaun's Keytar's names, by the way. By the way, uh, Deshaun's Keytar's names are uh, the big one that you see in most of the pictures uh, is Destiny. That's his favorite. Yeah, that's but you don't don't Destiny, tell yeah, don't tell the other keyboards about that. But uh, Destiny's child over here. And then he has a smaller hey, keytar dude, key, named Thelonious. Thelonious Thelonious is the smaller keytar. I thought you might like that, Borum. Thelonious is the black one. Yes. Yes. Yep. I thought it was that's, that's the one black. you brought on Jam Yep. I thought that's it was something different. Now, I have two keytars. I named, hey, what's going I, on I, in the I, background? I, Maybe you can put now. that down. It's a little too loud. It's a little too loud, what, that music. I, I named my world it's my The Calypso piece. dance party oh. in the background. And it's like someone's cooking breakfast. The other one's like, uh, you know, listening to a Calypso dance party <laughs> in the background. I named my I named my world it's a 140B Grumpy. Dude, Grumpy. look at uh, Nice going, Lammy. He put the, the famous picture of James Brown with the guitar up. Oh yeah, that's the that's that's the yeah. thing. James Brown plays guitar. Dude, take a. I mean, yeah. yeah wait, wait. You're not yeah. supposed to look at the at the oh, screen. What? Yeah, all of the yeah, he's it's up there. On a lot of those JB, on a lot of those JB recordings, he played. There's a couple of them where he played Mini Mood. He wow. Played, mm-hmm. He's the keyboard player for the, the keyboard my, player my for James is, Brown. Who, who is, is James the producer Brown? Of those sessions? It's not like James was asking yeah. for a move. But James was producing those sessions. Yes. But he asked he, for that specific produced, keyboard. Yeah. yeah, I mean they probably yeah. just had yeah. one in there. He's he a Bobby keyboard Brown. player. Yeah, they probably just had one in there. They're like, wow! Like, oh, give me that! It's a drum. Wow. Give me that! Right. It's a drum. Taste. It's like, oh, it's a vibe. Taste. Taste. How many times guitar. have you have you guys did you guys ever get to witness James Brown? I saw him one time in I Central know. Park, in New York. One time. No, closest I came was Rocky Four. I got to see him play <laughs> once live, but, but he had a shitty band. He didn't or, 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 do, or Dr. Detroit. Oh, no. You know Christian used to play with him. Wow. Christian McBride used to play with know. him. You call Christian, actually, you call Christian McBride's phone and his answering machine is James Brown saying, um, you, uh, give it up for the uh, amazing Mr. Christian McBride. Wow. Swear to he's, God, he's, bro. Chris is about to drop a record with uh with Josh Redman and 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 Brian Blade, Brad Meldow. It's the most cool. killing band. Just, this, this, he's about he's about to. Yeah, I mean they they made a record like 50, 20 years ago that quintet or quartet, but they they they're gonna drop a new record like next month. Everybody's waiting for it, but it's like you know those you're, are like, you know, you're so yeah. hip hop. You're like Joshua Redman. Redman. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua Redman. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, the opposite. Uh, the opposite. Uh, Adam, Adam's mom's like, "How was it working with uh, Redmond? <laughs> Red, have a track with Redmond? <laughs> you know what? My Redman story. When, Redman. I first, when I first came around, um, Schmeens took me up to um, South Schmeens. My man Schmeens. Shout out um, Schmeens. Uh, he took me up to uh, Cinemax. Yep. And Producer. we did, and we did uh, all the vocals for. Um, 
what's the joint? Uh, uh, the go-go joint. Uh, make, making my way back home for range. Oh, right, right. And and Red Man was in there, and he was, bro. He was. I have never seen anybody smoke and roll at the capacity that oh, yeah. he does. It was one point I had three blunts in my hand, and I was like, "Man, I'm trying to do these vocals, bro. I can't." And, and rap saying? though, but he could rap his ass off. He's one of the and greatest of all time. Rap his face off. Rap his face and off. Were you on that gig when I said, "Um, at Boston? yes, yes," with yes. Rizzo yeah. having the Wu Tang one of the most and, greatest, oh my God. biggest summits of artists of all time. I'm sorry. Yo, you remember when Rizzo came in and he was all drunk through our souls? Yeah, he was he he was carrying that bottle of vodka, swinging it around, being crazy. He had a bottle of Tito's and yep. he was drinking it like it was Evian. Because of the rest of the bandmates were all, were all asking him for money because they're like, "Where's the bread?" Because Wu Tang was all there. Bro, it was it was crazy. That shit was nuts. Yeah, so that I don't you know, forget that. Yeah, if all your band members are asking you for money, just get really pissed drunk. That's what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> We'll take care of it in the morning. Yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll handle. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> Don't yeah, worry, I got it. Don't worry, I got it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, we all know that. <laughs> wow, we know man. that all too well. Yo, you know, I love you guys so yeah. much, man. I'm, this I'm this is right so now. real. Yeah, I'm. I'm a, I got to check out. Right I, now. I just. I uh, smelled it. Bar. I sensed it. Boram, uh, we love you. Thanks love for you coming so on the show. Uh, much love, brother boy. Yeah, you know, I'm going to play I'm that so snippet. I'm so glad that I know all, all three of y'all. Thank you so much. Yeah. Love you too, man. Love, love you too. Love you, bro. Ladies you and gentlemen, Boren Lee, there he goes. You're the greatest. Love. 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 Yeah. yeah, man. Well, hey, guys. That's awesome. You know, we did our thing here today. Yeah. Uh, it was like an impromptu. I really miss you guys, man. Yeah. Man, I miss you too, bro. Really? Yeah, man. Just sit with that for a second, you know? Like, we've been talking nonstop for an hour and 45 minutes. Do you realize that? Yeah. Yeah. It's good, man. It's we pretty needed awesome. it, man. Yeah. My show needed it. Yeah, know. man. That's awesome, bro. I love you guys so much. I'm going to do the same. All right. And once again, how about another round of applause? Here goes Nigel Hall. There you go. Thank you. Wow, Nigel, thank you are you the best. I love you. Uh, it's going to be the largest hey, hug nice. in recorded history when we end up seeing each other again. Oh, dude. Absolutely. I can't wait. All right. Nigel, All right, I love you guys. Love you too. All right, love you too. All right. Well, you know what? I think that means uh, like I'm pretty much uh, ready to uh, jump out and uh, do my wrap up cadence. What do you say, D vibes? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm, you're, you're I'm ready to wrap lit. this that sucker was, up with that me. That was a lit. What? A, yeah. Ooh, that was a, that was a lit show. What? What about that? You know what I mean? It's just like this is the jazz we're talking about. Hold on a second. Let's get this wrap up going and then we'll talk about it. Yes, we've arrived at the end of the show, but what a show it was. I mean, it started out with an idea. Uh, you know, we're going to reach back for uh, Mikey Karuba in a day or two. Uh, we're just, uh, you know, working out the details right now and, uh, you know, trying to make it happen. Uh, scheduling is, is, is tough because things come up we, uh, you know, that we don't plan for. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing from Mikey soon. Uh, you'll have to stay tuned for that. But, uh, you know, when, when you have to put something together in the, in the last minute, you know, first of all, just know I am prepared to go on uh, solo with D-Vibes, with Lammy by my side, with me in a, in, a, in a room with no power. I don't care how it's going to have to be. We'll figure it out. I'll go on. But, you know, it's nice to be able to... Uh, at least attempt to whip something together without knowing where it's going to go. And, you know, I reached out to a couple guys. You know, I'll talk to Nigel every day. You know, like, that's my best friend right yeah. there. I love that guy. I mean, he is of my best friends. He's, you know, you can't go anywhere. It's like when, when it's like you enter the, the secret circle and then you find me and D Vibes there. Yeah. You know, Vibes. In the cut. This is the best. You know what I mean? Like, I have missed you in this regard. This is the best. Yeah, bro. We used Me to do too, this. Man. I mean, like, you know, the people, we say it, but they don't, I don't know if they get it. It's like, imagine spending every day with someone for a few years, and then, you know, you encourage them to, uh, you know, get out there and, uh, you know, take some road gigs. You know what I mean? And, and uh, it, it leads to, uh, you know, 
you uh, losing your radio partner, and uh, that's fine, and uh, you know what, your favorite roommate ever, but you're happy for them, but you don't see them like you did. And uh, you know, like I said in the earlier today, you know, we used to go everywhere uh, together. It was the greatest thing, and uh, you was, know, and, and we still we, we talk got, and we, we Facetime all the time still. before this, but. Uh, you know, this having you around every day without fail, uh, and getting to do this same sort of thing that we did, it's like it's it's really refreshing and it's good. I'm really enjoying See, myself, vibes. You know, bro, we're, we're like we're like Rick and Morty with our pictures. Yes, we really are. <laughs> except except you are so much cooler than uh, than Morty. Like you know, There's a more, D vibes yeah. is way more useful. Like, can you imagine like <laughs> that world with all the D vibeses? It's like, the, dude, butts is oh, D vibes. Like, dude, okay, like, I don't want to go up against Rick. Okay, let's just say that. All right. <laughs> like, uh, uh, you know, but just hopefully he leaves us yeah. alone to like the land where all of our others are just like building the world's largest synth. I, I, I think that Rick would, he would probably appreciate and probably build us like a synth rig for us. He'd probably build like the, the new version of like the 55. I think we need to pitch this for the next season. Yeah. Coming soon to Rick and Morty. Butts and Vibes. Yeah, no. What do you know about Let's that? Do it. Hey, Deshaun, thank you. And uh, to the listeners, you guys are amazing. Like, uh, you know, you might think I'm offering you something, but you're really offering me something uh, by allowing me to do this and uh, making it work. And all your enthusiasm has, like, uh, you know, emboldened me to come in here and uh, do this thing that uh, that I can do, uh, that I did, and I w- didn't think I was going to do it, uh, any more of, really. But we're back. We are back. And I don't think we're going anywhere, folks. So, uh, you know, stick really around yet. for the ride. Like I said, we got guests coming. I talked to uh, Jeff Lockhart uh, just a second ago. Uh, he he might have come in tonight. I know he wants to get in on this show, so... We'll find out maybe a little bit more about uh, the mystery of the man known as Jeff Lockhart in the days coming ahead. Yeah. So, you know, I know we're not going anywhere. So, uh, you know, tune in tomorrow. We got a show. Vibes, I'm Audi. And, uh, oh, do we still have that break science thing uh, queued up? Uh, actually, wait. We'll wait on that. Let's play that track that Nigel gave me. And uh, then we can go out with the break science video. But thanks for tuning in, everybody. Peace out, Vibes. On the one, like...
just sort of vanished <laughs> i don't know what happened there but uh you know actually i was just queuing getting ready to say goodbye with this little uh sneak uh peak tease of the new break science record i got a minute of it here wait we got this feedback when we'll, we'll do that right after this and i'm gonna say goodbye oh i see the volume is off in the corner yeah there you are there you go well you know no really oh yeah okay well, never mind. All right, we're going to say goodbye with the uh, Instagram, uh, you know, little uh, break science tease, and uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. <laughs>